Hi, this is Gavin. My website's hickorygolf.co.uk. I just thought I'd do a short video showing a couple of clubs that I'm in process of making. These are putters. Whilst I've made several dozen clubs over the last 20 years, uh, I'd never made a left-handed club. And so about a week ago, I decided to uh, make myself a left-handed putter. And it was all going really well. And, and, and I put up a few pictures um, on my sort of Facebook feed just showing progress and uh, it was all very encouraging and then I came to the day when I thought right I'll I'll stain it and uh, was just about to get the stain out and I spied something wrong with the head and basically it had a little crack in it I thought well I don't want to go to the point of staining it just to have it crack thereafter so I gave it a good bending of the head and sort of dare I say, hit it a little bit with a, a wooden headed mallet. And this was the result, which is the head clean broke in two. <laughs> I wasn't a happy camper at the time, but you know, these things happen. And I guess what had happened was when I was putting the, the, the weight in. Now, and one thing some people have asked me, uh, do I use real lead? Well, actually I don't. Um, I use lead-free pewter. It means that you have to put in a little bit more because the pewter doesn't quite weigh as much as lead. So to compensate, you need to put in a bigger mass of pewter. And I took the decision a long time ago just to work with lead-free pewter. Anyway, so that was the putter um, that split. And I was so annoyed with myself that I then thought right I'm gonna make another one straight away and so I did cut out another left-handed head which is this one and just to explain okay so what I do is obviously I cut, cut the the wooden shape of the head out then the next thing I do is I put the the weight in I'll call it the lead weight um, so I put the lead in I think there's, there's more chance of things going wrong putting the lead in sometimes if you have it too hot then you can get cracks and you often see that and sometimes they'll have a crack just about here and often I think you can see that um, perhaps a screw has been put in. It, you, I used to think that these sort of um, repair jobs might have been done after the club was in use for some time. Having made clubs myself and seen what can happen during manufacture it may be that these cracks were evident during manufacture or close to the club being finished and rather than the the club maker scrap the club perhaps they did um, affect a repair by putting a screw to hold the crack tight and then maybe they sold the club as a, as a second an imperfect club better to get some money than none i mean these guys were not uh, wealthy guys they were very much living hand to mouth in what they made, they sold to buy food. It was quite as straightforward as that. So I think some of the clubs that are still in existence with repairs done to them, maybe as I say, maybe they were actually sold as seconds and the repair was done during making. So anyway, after um, I've put the lead in, then I put the horn slip in. I have put a little few videos on I think uh, my YouTube channel just showing me how I do that, which is basically I use a Japanese saw um, only because it's nice and sharp, nice and light. And I cut first, I cut lengthways there, and then I cut the one that's into the face like that. And then I cut actually then that way just there <clears throat> but of course you can't cut completely out with the saw you then have to get out a nice sharp chisel and that's how you you make the rebate for the horn then i glue in the horn and then after the initial glue is dried then i drill three holes and dowel it as well and those dowels then are also glued in uh, and as you can see from this club, the head is still fairly crudely shaped, I would say. Um, 
it's had a, a rudimentary sanding. Again, what I'm looking for is that there's no hidden cracks or um, other things that um, would show up later on. And then I cut the scare and glue that. And after applying the glue, I then bind it, as you can see, with string to hold it together. In some books, you see hose clamps uh, have been tightened round joins. But for me, I've always just used string, which is, I believe, how the old club makers did it. What you're also looking at before you actually put the glue on is you, 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 you bind it up and then just see whether the lie angle of the club, so this, this angle, see whether the club sits right on the ground. You don't obviously want it to toe up and you don't want it toe down. It's actually better to have it slightly toe up. It doesn't really matter so much with putters as you can tend to bevel. Again, if you leave a bit of wood down here, you can bevel the sole to compensate if it needs a bit of adjustment. The lie angle is a lot more important when it comes to fairway woods and um, play clubs, i.e. drivers. And then you need to have some, <laughs> some advanced planning on what angle the neck's going to be at. So anyway, this is an ash shaft that I've put on this putter. The next stage is really a bit of filing, hand filing all over to get it to a rough shape before moving to uh, some rough sandpaper, probably 40 grit, and then some 100 grit, and then probably some 300 grit, and then into staining and all the rest of it. What I often do is when I'm making clubs, because you have time periods where you have to let glue set, hey, um, it, it's useful to have a few on the go. So this is a right-hander, as, as you can tell, that is slightly more along the manufacturing route. It's had its first stain, coat of stain. I tend to use spirit stains for long nose clubs and it's now got its overall shape. So the next thing will be on this one, probably another second application of stain before moving on to uh, shellac or varnishes um, to, to give it its final coating. So there we are, just a short video about what it takes to make a long nose club. If you have any questions, please enter them in the comments or drop me an email at info at timewarpgolf.com and please check out my websites hickorygolf.co.uk and please press the like or subscribe button um, which should be below this screen and you'll get notified when I upload some new videos. Thanks for watching, bye!